Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Act With Purpose podcast. I am your MC for the evening, Adam Peddle, and also operations manager here at Act With Purpose. Over to my immediate left, we have John Stevens, the founder and CEO of Act With Purpose. How are you doing this morning, John? I am great because I'm inside and it is freezing and snowing outside. So I am very happy to be inside and warm I right agree. now with my big mug of coffee. I agree with the heat <laughs> and everything. I can agree more, man. And then very far over to my left, we have our guest for today. We've got Jason Norris from YCAA. How you doing, Jason? Thank you. I'm doing, I'm doing well. A little cold. Yeah, absolutely agree with the statement, but uh, <laughs> happy to be here. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, well, it's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. So, I mean, how did you get here? Did you drive here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah? How were the roads? Icy? A little slippery, yeah. A little slippery? <laughs> Slip sliding here and there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I mean, as long as you get here and you're safe, that's all that matters. You know what? I'll tell you a funny story about driving. It's like I can be, I can have, you know, my emotions in check a lot. I can keep my emotions in check and I'm a pretty easygoing guy. But when I get in, co- in a car behind the wheel, I turn into this different, like, get out of my way. Like, <laughs> ah, I got to get, like, I'm so, and today that came out a bit and I started slip sliding and I was like, ah, okay. I'm just going to play it cool. Right. I'm just going to get there when I get there. And right. Yeah, but but put me behind a wheel, different guy. Is it like <laughs> is it like guy. therapy? Because I, I don't drive. I, I'm ashamed to admit it. I don't even have my license. Yeah, you live in Toronto, right? Why, live in why Toronto. would you Why would you drive? Right, yeah. exactly. So, and so uh, is it like a type of therapy when you're just like, you have to let it out? Like maybe you've been bottling some stuff and like, this is the opportunity. And it feels better afterwards? No, I, I don't want to I, I don't <laughs> deep dive down into my my personality behind the wheel because I've said some pretty dark shit like looking at people and being like how like how did you make it this far like you know what I'm, like, yeah. like like it, it, I turn into like a different person like yeah. if you were if you were hanging out with me all day and then we all of a sudden went into a car you'd be like who is this guy? <laughs> I, yeah, so I don't know. I, no, I love it. Yeah. I always see my friends turn into a different person, but like I always just like chalk it up as like, this is their moment. Right. This is their time to process yes. <laughs> where it feels safe. So, yeah. uh, but besides driving, you obviously do a lot other things. I mean, sure. you are an agent. You're part of YCAA. Tell me about how you became part of YCAA or a little bit of your journey leading up to that. Yeah, so th- that's a great question. And... Um, so I started YCAA um, ba- back, you know, well, the thought of it started a while ago, right? The, the, the thought of it started in 2015. I was on the production side. So for 10 years, I worked in commercials, right? right. Making commercials for a big box agency. And I was on the production side and I liked it a lot, right? But consistently what seemed to happen is we'd have some actors come in and there was a bit of a disconnect, right? They would come in and they would have part of the information definitely had all the necessary information like time and location and uh, you know role or what the the shoot was about but beyond that there was no there was you know whenever I asked a question like oh well did you talk to your agent about this what did your agent say there was always kind of like a an uncomfortable smirk you know like mm-hmm. oh well I, I don't really talk to my agent I I mean he sends he sent me an email with all the details and I read it um but yeah, no, I mean, maybe once every three months I talk to my, and I was like, that's super interesting, right? Yeah. Because here is an asset to an agent for making money. And there's like, basically the relationship is, is virtual, right? Right. And what I mean by virtual is over email primarily, or, you know, I've, I, I, I talk to agents, don't even share their, their, their phone numbers with, with their actors. Right. 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 And, and that, that now that I'm an agent makes complete sense. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but at first there was a disconnect for me saying, well, why, why didn't you communicate with them? Why didn't you talk? Why didn't you get prepared? You know? And so that kind of sparked, um, a light bulb, right. An entrepreneurial light bulb. And, uh, I started investigating in ter- in terms of what the landscape looked like. And I saw like a massive white space for improved service to improve the level of service that was offered currently in Canada. Okay. So basically what I did is, and, um, you know, uh, a lot of people say like I'm the Jerry Maguire of, of Canada because I did have that one moment where I just sat down and I wrote down my thoughts, kind of like a mission statement, right? Or yeah. whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And I just sort of started thinking about what the perfect sort of agency would look like? How would they operate? What would they do differently from other agents yeah. and agencies that would that would be something where 
you know, actors would be proud to right. be part of. So what are what are those things? Like just off the top Yeah, we can get into it after. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I think that what are those things? Um, you know, just personalized communication, relationships, getting to know your actors, spending time with your actors, because I don't know if, you know, you and I have spoke over Zoom mm -hmm. a lot, right? We've spoke on the phone over Zoom. It's completely different when you meet me in person. Right. There's a different aura, a different energy. Exactly. And I don't know if you, like, on, you can see on my social media, if you follow me on Instagram or whatever, I make it a point to sit down with all my actors, right? And I, I invite them to these power lunches. I call them power lunches. And I sit down with them. And we just talk, just like we're doing right now, right? Without the microphones and the, and, and the cameras. Right. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be interesting. Right? I know, right? <laughs> Let's have a little I chat. Should do, I should do. Maybe you should have your own podcast. Start yeah, yeah, power lunch with Jason, right? Yeah, <laughs> hey. But, yeah. yeah, it could be. But no, I mean, these power lunches are really helpful for me. Yeah. And I think that the, the actors and the artists themselves definitely think that, oh, these are super helpful for them because I get, I get time with my agent. And sure, that is true. And there's a, but, but they benefit me far more than they probably benefit the artist because I get a sense of their energy. And with the world that we're living in today, with the self-tape world, with the virtual sort of everything is done at home world, there is a magic loss. There's a lot of actors that used to win inside the room that mm. no longer have that. And that is because there's an energy that's there is them, right. Absolutely. Cause it's like a, a job. I always chalk it up to some actors like, yeah, you're auditioning, you can be talented, et cetera, et cetera, know your stuff. But in the, the day it's a job interview, mm -hmm. right? And, and that personality comes through and in, in, in job interview, you, you're a person, you're talking. Do I want to work with this person? Do I want to put this person on set? Right. And you don't see that over zoom really. Absolutely not. Yeah. So, you know, so I started thinking and making these memos and sort of writing down a, a wish list of how uh, an agency should operate. This was in 2015. And okay. um, I kind of sort of scratched it away, let, let, let it go right for a bit and focused on the production side and what I was doing at the time. And um, then the moment came where, you know, one morning um, someone called me and said, could we use your daughter? in a music video. And I said, oh, okay. All right, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, let's do that. And she didn't have representation? No, she okay. didn't have representation. She hadn't even thought about being an actress, right? right? So I asked her, I said, would you like, and she's like, yes. And I'm like, okay, great, yeah. we're gonna do this. So lo and behold, we did it. And it was like a super long, like a non-union shoot, so it went on forever. Yeah. There was no regulations. I think she was nine at the time. Oh, and wow. she was there all day, right? Wow, she, yep. They were there because of weather, because of technicalities, because of all this. She was there all day, maybe 12 hours, right? And then an hour driving back from location to our house. And I was like, okay, well, at least she got a taste of the real, the real thing, right? How the industry works. And she comes back and she's like, I love it. I love it and i'm like oh no oh no <laughs> like i thought it was one and done right and i feel like so many parents can relate to that like please don't like it please yeah. don't like <laughs> it <laughs> right so so that really started you know that's when i started interviewing agents mm. and 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 with the you know with the intention of having my daughter be repped by an agent right mm. and every sort of thing that I kept hearing almost universally from agents was that that kind of tired notion that they get paid 15% commission so they only do 15% of the work and that you the actor or the uh, stage parents or the acting parents need to do 85 and there is truth to mm -hmm. that but that's not kind of how you want to open your like your pitch yeah, to someone. Yeah. You're going to have to do this on your own and we'll be here technically to sign the checks, right? But I mean, so that was that was universally the message was the expectation and this was coming from someone who was in in, in the industry. I had a, certainly an, an understanding of how things operated and how things worked. Mm -hmm. I wasn't like an accountant that just walked into this industry and was completely baffled by how it worked and, and, and everything. So for, for me to sit there and listen to how much 
um, you know, what the expectation was from new actors and new, new acting parents. Um, that really got me going. Like, yeah. That really got me going. I said, this is, there's an even bigger white space now. There's an absolute opportunity now. And that's when I started really putting things into motion. And um, that's when I started, you know, writing the foundation for what is YCA today. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when I, when I was happy and done with everything that I wrote down on the paper, I sent it to people who I respected in the industry. I sent it to people in New York. I sent it to people in L.A. I sent it to a lot of people in Toronto, uh, Montreal, Ottawa. And they all came back and they said, Jason, if you do this, if you do this exact kind of service level, this agency, you will change the landscape in Canada. Your agency will have a mark. Yeah. And I was like, that's it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to do it. And when did you start doing it? So I actually launched officially to yeah. the public in early 2019, just after 2018. Right. And that's when the world shut down. Right. That's right. when. How was that? How was that? When you're starting up a new business, obviously it's got to be a really difficult. Yeah, I mean, you know, there, there, there's many different sides. We could, we could attack like this, this question in many different ways. Um, one way is, you know, I, it was fortunate because it gave us time to slow down and to really, really assess the situation. And when I started the agency, well, the new normal, as they call it, the self-tape, the new normal. Well, that was my normal because I just started. Right. So I started with this landscape. I started with this, the way things are now mm -hmm. is the way things have always been for YCAA. Right. So we started, so in a way, the pandemic um, and the way things are is all I know. Right. But it was a blessing because I was able to reverse engineer the opportunity in that landscape. Right. So I didn't have that, oh my God, things have changed moment where, you know, um, they just kind of have to shift. shift you got to really And pivot. also and, resistance. Like I think yeah. a lot of people really tried to fight the system sure. and, and you can't, sometimes, at some point you just have to go with it. So I think that there was an advantage that you didn't have that preconceived, you know. Oh, absolutely. There was totally an advantage to coming in at the ground floor of COVID. Which sounds mm -hmm. weird to say. It does. Oh, but, absolutely. But, it, it, but it, 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 it is an absolute advantage in my pocket. Yeah. yeah. To, to, to be able to start the agency at the time that the industry shifted and started a, a new normal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it was great. It yeah. was great. And the other sense is that there was, it was extremely competitive because there were a whole bunch of people that lost their jobs, right? Waiters. Uh, retail store clerks, bartenders, they all lost their jobs. They lost their income. And now they were forced to basically figure out a way to bootstrap their way to making money. And a lot of them went to what they used to know and, and, and went back into the acting game. And with self-tapes being done at home, it was a lot right. more accessible for right. them. So um, on one hand, it was great. On the other hand, I came into this game at the most competitive time in history. Mm -hmm. Because now everything, like, you know, it went from 50 people auditioning for the role to, you know, I had a casting director tell me that she auditioned 800 over a weekend. Oh 800, 800 tapes. 800 tapes oh over a weekend. I said, That's a lot. How, how do you, do, you do, that? do that? How do you do that? And, you gotta be like skipping. And, well, she has a team. She's a, a, oh, bigger, okay. she's a bigger casting yeah, agent. Yeah, yeah. And so she starts from one to a hundred, one of her casting assistant does like, you know, 800 to 700. Yeah. And then someone takes the middle. So there's no, so it's all even, everyone gets an even shot. Right. But even at that, even at that 800 tapes, you know, and, yeah. and, and a lot of it is just basically, you know, skipping if they don't get what they want in the first five, 10 seconds. Exactly. Moving on because they don't have time to watch two minutes of 800 tapes. Yeah. It's just not enough time. And yeah. I bet as an agent, you know that. And you probably advise a lot of your actors, well, like, well, you got, you almost have to sell within the first five to 10 seconds. You know what I mean? Or like, how do you manage, how do you manage that? Like, do you, do you tell your agent or your actors that? I tell my, I, I tell my actors everything. Like yeah. I, I, I think I have a reputation for being extremely accessible and extremely 
you know, the communication level is quite high at YCAA. Yeah. And we're always, you know, doing workshops. We're always doing sending out collateral, right? Marketing collateral or informative collateral to help our actors just gain a better understanding of the expectations, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things to answer your question specifically, um, and you guys talk about this all the time in your, in your class, in your school, mm -hmm. what's the moment? What's the moment where there's going to be uh, an aha moment? Right. Find that moment in the script and make sure you nail that moment because the casting director is not gonna start from zero to 15 seconds. They're going to start at 40 seconds because they anticipate that moment yeah. being there. Right. And if you don't nail that moment there, well, they're not watching your tape. Right. If you do nail that moment, that, that, that cliffhanger or whatever, or that shift, that pivot, that beat, if you do nail it, then they go back and they start watching your uh, tape. Yeah, yeah. So it's not necessarily the first 10 to 15 seconds that they're focused on. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good insight. I want to talk about your workshops that you do because sure. I think it's really... Um, it's important and it's something that not everybody does. Right. And it seems like such an obvious thing, an easy thing to do. But I think I, I constantly, I refer to you as the Uber of agents in Canada because you've shaken. I like it. You have, yeah. you've, you've shaken things up. You've changed, you know, like you said, the landscape yeah. quite, quite significantly. And I think it's so brilliant to introduce your actors, even when like, like, especially over the pandemic, uh, we tried to do as much outreach as we could, but you were already doing it. And I think it was like, it was such a brilliant thing. And I know that other actors are talking about it. I know that other agents are talking about it. Sure. Um, it's such a value to, to your actors. What's yeah. the feedback you've gotten from them? I mean, you know, and thank you so much for recognizing that and for positioning the question that way. I mean, it's funny because I had an, I had an agent, you know, because us agents actually talk to each other. Right? Yeah. There's no... You know, I mean, the mindset of an agent is not a necessarily, it is competitive. You have to be competitive to be an agent. Don't get me wrong, but it's not competing against other agents, right? It really, really isn't. So there is a, a, a community, uh, a welcoming community in, in the agent world. Almost every agent I've met, and I mean, almost every agent I met, I, I walked you know, away with, with their number and thought they were a great person and a great resource to tap into later. Yeah. So there is an open dialogue with, and it's funny that you say that because one day um, there was, I guess, an, 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 an agent, local agent, and um, I get a call. I'm like, oh, great. That's awesome. So I pick up the phone. I'm like, hi. And, and this agent says, hey, you know, they're like, hey, are you doing these monthly workshops where you have like people come and talk to your actors? I'm like, yeah, yeah, the YCA workshops. He's like, fuck off. And then he hangs up. I'm like, oh no. Oh no. What? what? In, a, in a good way. In a good oh, way. okay. In a totally it's like, like, in a totally like, okay. oh, I gotta do more work now. Like, yeah, 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 I love that. <laughs> you know, and you know, and, 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 and this particular agent, this particular agent is awesome. Okay. And, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, um, we, we, we've had many dialogues, but this one I knew it, it's like, you know, when you have to get out of bed and you're like, oh, yeah, what? Yeah. So they, they just called to validate the fact. Like, yeah. I just got off the phone with someone who's also potentially going to sign with you. And they told me, do you offer monthly workshops with professionals? I said, what? Yeah. Well, Jason does. And I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of funny that you say that. Cause yeah. It, it, well, people are talking about it. Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's, a, it's a, like you talked about uh, the things that you wanted to change yeah. and one of them being communication yes. and giving them the opportunity to communicate directly with a photographer, a coach, a casting yeah. director, a dialect coach, you yeah. know, all those different things We've are so valuable. Yeah. yeah. We've it, had every single one that you named on a workshop, right? Wow. We, we just, uh, yeah, I mean, like, and, and this to, I'm not going to take full credit, like Emma Ryan, yeah. um, she and I had talked about how are we going to get in this landscape, in this COVID world, in the self-tape world, in this ultra competitive, fiercely competitive world, how are we going to give our actors, the YCA people, just a small edge, just mm -hmm. not only a small edge, um, but but competitive edge and and for for 
Emma's side of things, she wanted to keep them engaged, which is super important, mm -hmm. not to lose interest. So together we came out with the idea of what if we what if we just send an email out to basically all all the people we know in the industry, casting directors, directors, you know, photographers, headshot photographers, coaches, schools, uh, people we we knew would not only disproportionately increase their chances of booking, but help them understand the competitive landscape and the requirements, you know, that are asked of them and the expectation from the industry. So we wrote a bunch of emails and I, I have to tell you, we thought we'd get one or two of our close, super close connections to say, sure, I'll, I'll do it. And we literally got everyone. Wow. Everyone came back, you know, like Larissa Mayer, Stephen Mann, Jesse Griffiths, like, yeah. you know, David Lays, you know, Joy Jukes, like yeah. everybody came out and said, that's a great idea. Yeah. I'd love to be a part of that. I want to talk to actors right now. I want to be able to, you know, share some, you know, create expectations and make sure that when they come, when we ask them to audition, when they come in, they know what we're expecting. So yeah. it was super helpful. But I think that the people that came on the, the, the workshop, the monthly workshop, they loved it too because yeah. they were connecting with with, you know, actors. They were connecting with people that were really captivated and listening to them. So this workshop, yeah, it's been, it's been really a game changer for us. It's really um, changed how competitive our roster is. We punt way above our, our weight. We are, we disproportionately, the amount of actors that I have on my roster, for that amount of actors, I should have hundreds, hundreds of actors on my roster. Yeah. But we don't, right? How many do you have roughly we, right now? We have a little over 50. Okay. Right? So it's a small roster. So to be, to keep, you know, to keep things moving, we have to book a lot. And we do. We do book a lot. Why? Because we are arming our actors with the knowledge they need and also keeping their enthusiasm, the Emma Ryan component, the engagement. They, we keep them engaged to uh to to to, to want to act yeah. to want to get better to yeah, yeah. you know i've had many actors many of my actors come to me and say you know the way that you're driving the agency the way that you're leading us to be better actors better artists better people makes me want to work so hard for you yeah makes me want to just what can i do what can i do and that's kind of and like one of the lines that I had, and I've never shared this. This is a this is an act with purpose Ooh. podcast. <laughs> okay, okay. I have, Stop the presses. <laughs> never, I have never shared this, but one of the things that I decided a long time ago, you know, because I studied communication at university and and big business geek, big entrepreneurial nerd mm -hmm. is, is is basically if you scratch all the layers of of Jason the Onion. You'll get to the nugget. And I am, by nature, an entrepreneur. Yeah. An entrepreneurial, competitive, high-spirit guy. So one of the things that was told to me years ago, years ago, is that there are two ways. There are two ways to build a company, right? To build the biggest building in town, mm -hmm. right? This, what I'm about to say is, is I, I've said this many times before, but what I'm about to say following up this, this lead. You got me on the edge of my seat, Jason. <laughs> There's two ways of building the biggest building in town. There's just doing it. Just by building the biggest building in town. Just by keep going floor by floor, by the ground up, build the biggest building in town. And there's another way, which 90% of the new businesses use, is by building a decent sized building and knocking everyone else's down. Right? And that's how you get the biggest building in town is you right. just build a decent size one and knock everyone else's down. Right. So I, that, that gravitated towards the type of person I am and said, I, I'm a lot more like one, not two. I don't want to build people 
Like I don't want to build something decent mm-hmm. and build up, like destroy other people's work. Mm-hmm. So one of the lines that I had in my memo, and this is the exclusive, is one of the lines that I wrote in that sort of mission statement, if you will, for mm. YCA, is I wanted an agency where employees and actors alike would hug each other in the hallway. That mm. there was zero competition. Right. That was camaraderie, family-like values, and that we would 100% be a YCAA team, a family. And you have that. If you see our actors, every other agency is like, oh, who looks like me on the agency? Right. Oh, that person. I'm competing against that person. I'm competing against that person. I actually had one of my actors, one of their moms, come to me and basically show a picture of an actor that looked like one of the actors that they were trying to sign on, an actor that they had, and said, this is your competition on my roster. I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. But, you know, but that's the mentality, right? That's yeah. that Steve Jobs, sexy, Old someone, school, yeah. someone mm-hmm. romanticized um, knocking people down. Right. Someone romanticized that a long time ago. And yeah. that's a narrative that has to stop. Yeah. Especially in this industry. Totally. Especially agree. in this industry, that negative narrative of you're never going to work another day in your life. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? Who says that? Yeah. You saw that in a movie somewhere. Yeah. And you yeah. love that line. That's scripted. And embraced it. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. scripted. But the amount of people, the amount of actors that have been told that, the mm. amount of actors that have been told that yeah. is ludicrous. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to go to a casting director and say, uh, please don't audition this person. Yeah. Casting is going to be like, well, that's my job. Yeah. My yeah. job is to find new exciting faces, new talent. Yeah. Were you telling me not to do my job? Yeah. yeah. So that narrative of negativity and like threatening people. And it's like, there's so many ways to succeed. There's so many ways to succeed. Yeah. And that old Hollywood, uh, hard nosed business thing is really, really unsexy now. I agree. It's yeah. I mean, I mean, I know you growing up, like when you were, it was a different culture. It was a different culture. (laughs) Um, but I agree. It's we're so, and I've, my line that I've said is we're so much stronger when we're all working together than we're, when we're trying to tear each other apart, it's wasted energy. And there's plenty of work. There's plenty of, Everything to go around, like all of that nonsense is just a waste of time. Absolutely. Um, and when you focus instead on positivity, that there's so much more that comes out of that. 100%. And that's kind of like the narrative, like where, you know, that line that I have in my, in my mission statement of hugging each other. Mm-hmm. I mean, why not? Yeah. Why not? And, and our actors, when they book something... You know who in the comment section are the most supportive? The other actors. The, the other, other actors. actors. Yeah. The other actors on our roster are incredibly supportive. Yeah. No, and it really, it really is. There's so much more value in being a good human. There's so much more value in being a resourceful human. And I think that was kind of the vernacular. That was kind of the mission statement back in the day, right? When, Mm. um, you know, the United States had that great line, like, don't think what the state could do for you, but do what you could do for your country, right? Mm -hmm. And that sort of sparked this giving this mentality, but then the the likes of, you know, Hollywood and uh, romanticizing the Steve Jobs who were like, you know, absolutely phenomenal at what they did, but treated their employees like shit. And then I've seen people that I know personally who were good people change the way that they acted at work because they thought that's the way they needed to do. And everyone has their own definition of success. And when you believe that that one last dollar is like that one dollar is the last dollar, that that one opportunity is the last opportunity, you need to reshift your mindset because we actually live in a world of abundance there's plenty of hollywood toronto vancouver that's not going to stop tomorrow we're Mm -hmm. not going to shut the doors and say it's done there's always always going to be more opportunity and when you approach the industry 
with a mindset of abundance, mm -hmm. right? Not in that cheesy spiritual, the, like the secret thing. Right, right. I'm talking about just understanding that there's plenty of opportunity. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things that like a lot of the agents, when we're together, we talk about. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of actors to go around. There is plenty of actors, there's plenty of vice versa, there's plenty of agents to go around, mm -hmm. right? So when someone comes on to your roster and not someone else's roster, why, why be upset? There's plenty of actors. Exactly. Why, if you don't get that one role, why be upset? You'll get another audition next week. You'll get another audition in two weeks in a month from now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so when people approach the industry in a negative mindset, especially this industry, for me, it, it, it's a big turnoff. And I think it's unpopular. It, I, think, I, I think it is shifting, right? Well, where, totally. Where it's more positive and encouraging, and you're helping with that. But, absolutely. I and, hope and, so, anyways. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and when you see the negative mindset, it's almost easier to identify. It's like, this, this person is doing something because they, either they think that's what you're supposed to do, or something's, maybe they're going through something, who knows? Yeah. But it's just, you can see it a lot more clearly. You know, 100%. And... Uh, and I couldn't agree with you more, Adam, because if uh, one of the things that, you know, we talked about the onion, if you unlayer the onion of Jason, you'll figure out that deep down, and this is, this is like a super important moment for me in my life. Deep down, I reverse engineer everything, right? I take the ideal of an agency. Mm -hmm. I, I write down the ideal agency, how it would work, how it would operate, what it would look like. And then I reverse engineer the steps to get there. What do I need to do? What do I need to do each and every day on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis to get to you know, planning, right? right? Business planning, right. reverse engineering the opportunity. That's what I do with everything. And actually I did that with my life. And I think that this sort of kind of mm. dictated the person I became because at a very young age, I want to say I'm 12, maybe 13, very young, very young. I, um, Super morbid, but there's a happy ending. Please. And you'll understand me once you understand it. Yeah. I went to a funeral to someone who um, my parents spoke quite highly about. Never their character, though. Always their bank account. Their successes that were materialized. Mm -hmm. They were... So we had to go to this, you know, funeral. And I showed up, and I was like, oh, okay, this is a very successful person, very well-respected person so i thought um and i showed up and there was like not that many people there mm. their own brother didn't show up there was i want to say 40 people wow. and if you haven't gone to a funeral before 40 people is not a lot here was someone who according to my dad and my parents was ultra successful right and we were, we had the opportunity to see and pay our respects for the last time ever to this one person. Yeah. And then no one shows up. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? Yeah. On the flip side, a person that I knew and respected a lot, a teacher that I respected a lot, um, they passed away. So years later, I want to say this is now, I'm 15 years old. So obviously there was no question I was gonna go. Mm -hmm. Terrified, devastated, crying. This person had genuine impact on my life. Mm -hmm. I show up to their funeral, and there's a two hour wait to get in. Oh there's over wow. 250 people waiting to pay respect to mm -hmm. that person. Wow. Right then and there, I got super happy and I said, this is awesome. And right then and there I decided, I'm gonna reverse engineer this moment for my life. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. I'm not gonna do what I knew like was supposed to be successful. This looks like success to me. Yeah. This looks way cooler and way more successful to me at a young influential age of 15 yeah. than, than I ever thought. So based on that, I've reversed engineer every single one of my decisions based on that. That's true. That's honestly, that's, that's kind of like impacted me a little bit just in the way I'm thinking about my life a little bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's beautiful. It's a different focus. Yeah. A different mindset. Yeah. It's long-term for me. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely long-term. And if you talk to people, and this is something I'm very proud of, there are not many people, 
that are going to say Jason is a bad guy. Jason's, the amount of email replies that I get from people in the industry that are like, you're amazing. Oh, we love you. Oh my God, thank you so much. Or the positive replies I get back means that I'm on track for my ultimate vision mm-hmm. of having um, a, 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 well, a well-attended <laughs> funeral. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> a long-lasting well, that's impact. That's so morbid. I know, right? <laughs> but hey, think about that teacher. Even right now, yeah. you're still talking about her. Absolutely. And it's changing your life. Absolutely. Isn't that the kind of impact you want, right? It really is. And, you know, it was a credit to the type of person that they were. And, um, yeah, I mean... People, students kept calling yeah. years after they retired. Yeah, to talk for two hours on the phone. And, Amazing. And 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 I mean, and that's kind of so that if you want to say like, I plagiarized my life. I did. I plagiarized <laughs> it after this person. I want to be accessible. I want to be nice, kind, and I want to build the biggest building in town without destroying anyone else's efforts. Yeah, yeah. I love that. So speaking of. Talking on the phone. Sure. <laughs> you, in a, yeah. yeah in, a, you in addition to the workshops and the networking that you create, yeah. you also do something that a lot of agents in Canada don't do. Okay. And you, Remind me. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of things. Yeah. But here's, no. the thing, here's the thing is that I, I've, never, I've never built someone, like destroyed someone else's building. No. So by doing that, I've just focused on my own efforts and what yeah. I need to do to reverse engineer the opportunity. So I'm, I'm aware, but you'd be surprised at how unaware I am of how other agents operate. Yeah. I'm extremely I hear that. unaware I hear that. of how that is. Like, I just assume that they all are doing what I'm doing, kind of. Right. But I hear from many people that that's not the way. But yeah. I don't want to focus on that because I've never focused on... So your question, I have no idea where you're going with that yeah, because yeah. it could be anything. <laughs> well, something that I think is refreshing and it's, not, and it's effective, and I think we've talked about it um, mm-hmm. briefly before, but you pitch. And when you think that somebody yes. is really, really great yes. for a role, yes. you get on the phone or send an email Absolutely. and you let the casting director know, hey, this person has played this type of role before. In yeah. fact, here's a clip. Yeah. You you really go that extra mile. You don't just submit and then sit back and wait for the actor to send in the self tape and then, you know, wait for a phone to ring or an email to come in. You are actively involved. And I know it's made a difference in a number of different castings and it's built relationships with casting directors. So like, I think that that's another, just when you talk about like what an, an agent is and what they can be doing and all those sorts of things, I think that's a really powerful tool as well. Yeah, and okay, I told Unless you... Unless that was a secret and I'm not supposed to give away. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a secret. I actually think all agents probably do some, some form of that. Mm-hmm. I actually think that all agents, to give credit where credit is due, I think we all operate that way. But to your point, I started with that mentality, not knowing mm. that this was not supposed to happen all the time. When I first started, when I first launched, I was pitching everyone. Yeah. In fact, I've got a story for you guys with one of the biggest <laughs> casting directors in Canada, not in Toronto, in Canada. Uh-huh. Okay. And I write this lovely email. Hey, so-and-so, uh, you know, so nice to meet you over email. <laughs> I just want to present, I see that you're casting for this project. Beautiful. I have this perfect actor. They've done this, that. Here's their IMDB, attached their resume, three headshots, and then just kind of dedicated and committed and and you know and i was like yeah i felt so good about that <laughs> yeah you know, i went to my fridge probably cracked open a beer <laughs> had, a, had a mini celebration but by the time <laughs> by the time i got to the fridge to celebrate boop, boop, i get an email from them and oh, i'm like wow. not suitable for role i was like <laughs> just that's it that's it <laughs> and i kind of said well you know Forget the beer. Just give me the strong stuff. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> what just happened? I just, I just mm. ruined my entire reputation with the biggest, most powerful casting director. Oh my um, gosh! In Canada. Do you know why? I, now? That was an aha moment for me because, and now that I look back on mm-hmm. it, 
they were absolutely right. That actor was not suitable for the role. Right. But I was just young and hungry, hungry, and yeah. enthusiastic, and <laughs> and now that same casting director, I have an amazing relationship right, with. Right. You know, she and I like exchanged some great, great complimentary uh, back and forth emails. So you know, no, no, no harm done there. But that was kind of my like welcome to the the big leagues. <laughs> right. Right. You know, right. it was like kind of. So to answer your question, I will pitch people, and I am a strong advocate of all my actors. But if they say, you know, thirty to forty-five year old male, I can't pitch you. I just have to submit you. Mm -hmm. But if they say 30 to 45 year old male who plays hockey, now I can pitch you. Mm -hmm. Now you gave me an opportunity to contact you. Yeah. Now every casting director listening to this podcast <laughs> is going to be like, all right, we're making more vague now. So yeah, we'll get more less vague. Like, we need a human. We yeah. <laughs> <laughs> want a human. <laughs> you know I, I love mean. that. I so, love that. So when there is opportunity to pitch. Yeah. And you're right in saying that not every agent does that because not every agent has as as manageable a roster that YCAA does. And so also I think see, different markets have different cultures too. Different markets have different cultures. Um, and, you know, again, I am unaware of how I just operate in the industry and not a different market. I operate the same in Los Angeles with the Los Angeles casting directors. I operate the same with the Toronto and Vancouver as I do with, you know, the Montreal casting directors. Um, so I would be unaware of how to operate differently because mm -hmm. that's just kind of the fabric of who I am. Yeah. However, however, to your point, there are many agents and agencies that have hundreds yeah. and hundreds of actors on their roster and they may want to, but they, they might not know every single actor in depth and as well as I know every single actor on my roster. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have an inside joke at the agency, which I believe that every single actor on our roster probably thinks that they are my favorite client. They Based probably, on the way that you you They're interact. like, there's no way he talks to the other actors as right. much as he talks to. There's no way I can reach him on a Saturday night and, yeah. you know, and he'll reply back. And there's no way, like... But I do it with everyone. So, right. And that's kind of the culture we've built. So, yeah, let me ask you then, because obviously that's a ton of work to it treat is. your roster of 50 people like they're the number one. Do you, and not to discourage any of your work, but like, do you find it like it's a bit challenging to do that? Absolutely not. I mean, yeah? in reality, in reality, it's work. Yeah. And I'm working eight hours, 10, 12 hours a day. Yeah. So when you get an email, you answer it. When you get a phone call, you answer it. That's the way I was brought up. Right. So right. it's just part of the job. It's part right. of the work. Now, I understand your question. I understand that you're saying, like, that's a, not many it people do like that. sounds like a lot. Yeah, sounds a lot like of people a lot. can't do that. Yeah, yeah. And again, I'm going to let you know, I have no idea how anyone else operates. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I operate. Yeah. Yeah. I love well, that. It's working. A lot of actors you know, that are just joining the industry and they're, they're, there's so many different agencies like we're talking about. Yeah. Like, who's the right agent for me? What do I do? For you, how, how would you prefer an actor approach you if they're interested in representation? How do they go about that process from your point of view? So it is extremely competitive to come onto our roster. So the smaller the roster is, the more manageable the roster is, the harder it, it should be to get on. That's the way you want it. If you're an actor on my roster and I'm just accepting anybody mm -hmm. and you had to audition two times or you had to send me like, a, 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 you're going to be like, how, why is it easy for that person? So it is extremely difficult for actors who are just starting out to sign with YCAA. Not to discourage anyone to approach us, but the key, okay, mm -hmm. the key is to go through someone that I know. Right? Right. In what, like in John, what regards? Like, like John. John. Like, okay. uh, you know, a casting director, like a, uh, a photographer. Like David mm -hmm. Lays sends me a whole bunch of people, right? Right. A whole bunch of people to look at. I don't accept all of them, but I do appreciate. So that's one way that you can come onto our roster is by, a re by way of referral. Because there's already been someone who will have said, 
Well, I'm not, I don't think it's the moment for you. I don't think you're mm-hmm. ready for Jason's roster just yet. Just yet. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. a lot easier for the actor, actress, artist to hear it coming from someone else than coming from me. Right. So when someone else could say, that's a great goal to have to join Jason's roster. This is what I think you need to do to get there. And once you're there, I will, it will be my pleasure to introduce you. Okay. So I want to say we get, we get, we're now getting a lot of submissions Mm -hmm. and a lot of those submissions are, you know, very polite, very empathetic rejections Mm -hmm. because they just aren't ready to compete on our roster. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of people uh, at our agency now, all of a sudden, uh, this year, 2023, has been like an explosion. And it's funny because they say like, you know, your third year of business and officially on paper, yeah. it's been three years now. And this yeah. year has started off with a, with a bang. But we have close to 50 actors on our roster. That's a lot for us, mm-hmm. percentage-wise. Mm-hmm. Percentage-wise, and that's what I base myself off of, the percentage. We are off to a great start, right? Yeah. Um, not only... Not only success wise like small successes you know but our first our first workshop of the year was uh the director michael kennedy so michael kennedy if you know people who are listening don't know who he is he is an icon director in the world of canada Mm -hmm. he's he's borderline like a canadian legend right so he's directed uh the entire first season of little mosque on the prairie uh, he directed uh, Kids in the Hall. Yeah. He directed um, The Good Witch, right? He's mm-hmm. done like over 30 episodes of The Good Witch. He's done many, many Walmart, uh, Hallmark. Um, yeah, he's done many, many Hallmark, uh, you know, Christmas movies, which is what he's currently doing. Although now. Walmart should do Christmas movies. <laughs> I think we're on to something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. So anyways, yeah. So he's done many, many Hallmark Christmas movies. So to have that, person come and take an hour of their time to talk to our actors and it was magical that workshop was magical yeah he decided that he wanted to break down a scene so he brought a scene from a movie and he broke it down bit by bit by bit and i had new actors that were in on this workshop and seeing by senior, I mean, high level actors mm-hmm. who have a lot of uh, experience and, and clout in the industry. Mm-hmm. And the room was silent after he broke down. It was a wow. master class in acting, just watching a director, a director of their, of his caliber break down a scene, gave everyone in the room watching that workshop in attendance say, Oh my, these guys know exactly what they're looking for. Right. Oh my, the amount of detail they put into my self tape. Oh my, like Mm -hmm. it was a moment where, and I'm hosting just like you're doing right now. Uh. I'm like, how do I follow that up? (laughs) (laughs) What's the, what's the, how do I get out? Yeah. Yeah. Open up for questions. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so, right. it was They're like, all answered. <laughs> but it, right. so, so 2023 for YCAA, I'm extremely grateful and proud to say that it's been our best start to a year mm-hmm. ever, which is funny because 2022 industry wise and for YCAA ended very, you know, weirdly. So to start the year 2023, the way we have, I'm just full of gratitude and, and, and just appreciation. Nice. So to answer your initial question, Adam, yeah, um, it it is far easier to join our roster by way of referral mm-hmm. than to just blindly submit, right? Because we get a lot of submissions now. Yeah, I was gonna say I actually have had a lot of actor friends who have submitted, and they feel like when they don't get a response or they get rejected, they feel like they that relationship is broken now. Is that true, or do you think that they could still have an opportunity to join you another time? Yeah, absolutely, especially especially with the way that, you know, the um, cyber spam security has elevated over the last few years. We may not even have received that person's right. the, uh, 
audition, right? But, but however, to your point, if you do decide to submit to an artist, uh, to, to an, uh, an agency like ours, we do have guidelines as to what we must have. It's not a suggestion. I mean, mm-hmm. probably it's written that it is a suggestion. But if we ask for, you know, two, or, two headshots, a demo reel, your resume, and you just send me a really well-crafted email saying you're super enthusiastic about mm-hmm. the industry and want to become an actor, yeah, we're probably not going to reply to that because we think you're just fishing. Right. You're just basically throwing darts at the wall to see what sticks. Right. However, if you are serious about joining, go by way of referral. If you don't have someone who's ready to refer you yet, ask them what, they, what you could do so they will refer you to me. Mm-hmm. Or at least, at the very least, follow the instructions on their website for submission and over-deliver on what they're asking for Yeah, in terms of material. Yeah, good point. Right. And, and, and because you're building up your roster and you're doing these workshops and, and I, yeah, you're right. Like it is a different relationship that you're having from agent to the actor Absolutely. themselves. Right. Absolutely. So I want to go back a little bit on what you said earlier. Sure. Um, when you were talking about how, you know, you got to build up the actors and support each other back yeah. to your mission statement. Like we, you know, you should be hugging each other in the hallways. Well, I mean, metaphorically, metaphorically, yeah. Yeah. fist pump are good. You fist know. pumps are good. It's COVID, you know, elbows, whatever people are comfortable with. Yeah. Um, but um, I know that there's other people, uh, and I don't want to give you an opportunity to speak on this, but there's other people who may not encourage that where it's like you, you stick to your lane and like, you're not, maybe you're not, maybe, maybe they get, maybe they get like something from like a, uh, an, an acting coach or an agent or maybe even casting, who knows someone who's like saying that you're not going to go far. If you continue with this, you're you'll not never good go, enough. you'll never get anywhere in this town. Exactly. Kid. You'll that, never go anywhere. So I want to give you an opportunity to comment on that. Like, um, sure. what do you, what do you say to those people? So first and foremost, what I say to those people or what I would say to those people is have a conversation a candid conversation with the person who said that to you and ask them after the moment. I know in the heat of the moment it can be difficult, but just walk away. Come back and have a conversation with them. But know in the back of your mind, know always in the back of your mind that that statement is bullshit and that if you have the talent, there ain't nobody that's going to stop you. We will find you. And you will be successful. So go into that conversation with that ammunition in the back. Is that statement that you're never going to work in this town is old, it's mm-hmm. tiring, and it's bullshit. And remember that if you got the chops, if you're good enough, you're good enough. Yeah, I agree. Period. Yeah. I feel like you got to continue to believe in yourself. And, 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 and you almost got to take a different approach. If someone's saying it to me, first of all, do I decide to take that personally? Do I decide to, to, or do I decide to take that as the end, or do I decide to take that as a as a question for myself? Why did this person think that? Is there, is it something with me, or is it something I can improve upon? Like you know what I mean? I love and that. You analyze it that way rather than be like, oh well, you know, they they don't know anything. Well, it's like, well, analyze it a little bit. You know, don't take it personally. See it as, see it as a business. I absolutely one hundred percent agree with what you say. Yeah. And I'm gonna actually, may I may I get. Uh, the great please john stevens to read a post please because i can't say it as well as we said it on our own social media <laughs> don, I, I love it interact i did this <laughs> this post was written i better get my glasses on. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah get the reading glasses, <laughs> glasses. <laughs> here you go john you can <clears throat> read that post. actors weekend mindset as we wrap up the week Here's a thought to lead you into this weekend. Let's focus on self-kindness. Many of us struggle with self-love due to excessive self-judgment and comparing ourselves to others. But it's time to shift our perspective. Instead of criticizing ourselves for what we're not, let's embrace and love who we are. By focusing on self-compassion and self-love in 2023, We can transform our lives and find more happiness. Take this moment to be gentle with yourself and focus on positive self-talk. You're amazing just as you are. And that statement is something that we wholeheartedly believe at YCAA is that actors in particular 
have a lot of negative talk. For sure. Yeah. Have a lot of, I'm not good enough. Have a lot of, well, I'll never do that. Mm -hmm. Have a lot of, oh, why'd you screw this up? Mm -hmm. That's got to shift. If you want to be successful in this industry, not only as an actor, as an agent also. Yeah. When I see like some of the actors that, that, that other agents have be successful, I'm not like, oh, rah, 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 rah. I'm mm -hmm. like, awesome. I'm like, great. I'm like clapping. Yeah. But I'm like, but it's not over yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still got to stop the pass. I'm coming. Absolutely. I'm coming. And that's the mindset because I remind myself that instead of saying, I didn't get it. I'm terrible. You could say something. You don't have to be like a platitude like, I didn't get it. They're terrible. Or I didn't mm -hmm. get it. They don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Or I didn't get it. Uh, I'm fabulous. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. It's just, I didn't get it. Why? Exactly. Have reverse engineer the why. Exactly. That's the kind of talk that actors these days need to start having. More positive talk. It doesn't need to be platitudes, roses, yeah. and sunshines. It needs to be realistic talk. Exactly. And I think a lot of people, and I, I hear what they're trying to do, and I'm a big self-talker and self-believer and you know, self-growth. I'm trying to grow every single day and change the awesome. way my mind awesome. operates. Um, but a lot of people really lean into the way of like, okay, I'm gonna, I have a lot of negative thought. I'm going to slam it with positive, which is great. Mm. You're trying to do something. But it's like, you almost don't want to lie to yourself. If Correct. you're messing up, you can't just be like, no, no, actually, I'm really great at it. But no, if you're messing up, why am I messing up? And it starts there. And then you can dive in deeper and, and disassociate the personal attachment to your right. work and see it for work, right? And, and, and question the work and, and continue to grow based on the feedback you're getting. And if, it's, and if it's, someone's coming out negatively and makes it personal, know that that's personal, put it to the side, but take the constructive part and grow yourself. And that's the best way that you can do it. And then be proud of that and say, and then at the end of the day, you can 100%. be like, I love what I do. I'm proud of my work. Yeah, because right? it's, it's, it's just as bad to say, I'm terrible, I'll never succeed in this industry, as mm -hmm. it is to say, I'm the best, and people don't know what they're missing. Exactly. You have to have, there's a gray area there. And mm -hmm. that's where the healthy self-talk starts, yeah. where you can actually pragmatically reverse engineer the why. Yep. Why didn't that happen? Or why did this happen? Right. Self-talk, I'm a huge, huge ambassador of changing the mindset actors currently have of that negative, self-destructing self-talk that they currently have. And they yep. can shift that to something a lot more positive, productive, and helpful. I yeah. agree. That's a good point. Well, and on that note, uh, thank you, Jason, for coming out today and coming into the Active Purpose Studios. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Like, honestly, this has been a great time. Honestly, yeah. It's been really refreshing. And I think it's awesome. uh, it's going to be, uh, I think this is one of my favorites. It's just yeah. nice to kind of. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the ultra, comp like, the ultra <laughs> competitive yeah. little onion in me. Like, yes. I, I, <laughs> uh, I told you guys. I I, you said it before. <laughs> I wrote it in my email when I accepted this. I said, I want to come and provide the most value yes. you've ever had on the podcast. Absolutely. You gave me a lot of clips to clip. I love that's it. That's going sure. yes. to be the name of your autobiography. <laughs> the little onion inside me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Well, on that note, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe to the Active Purpose YouTube channel. And as always, guys, till next time.